within it. Right. Now, most of the other 46 nations currently members of the European Union were also at one point in time part of the Roman Empire in some point of its history. The EU's crest is a circle of ten stars. Inside that circle you have a representation of Europa riding upon the god Zeus. Europa was a, a woman of, in Greek mythology. God Zeus presented himself, little g, to her in the form of a bull. Okay. This is Revelation 17.3. Over there. Oh, I'll just read that real quick here for you. 17.3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Well, we know who the scarlet colored beast is. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And it's beauty in the beast. What you've got here. It's the great poor Rome riding upon the great red dragon. That's why you will hear me refer to the Church of Rome as the Church of Satan. In the European Union, the old Roman Empire, will be the basis of the kingdom of the beast. And that's why we have those ten horns with ten crowns. Back again, going back to Daniel chapter 2. Verses 36 through 43, where again you have uh, Daniel interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar of that statue. Well, at the bottom of those two iron legs, you've got two feet. That's usually what's at the bottom of legs. With Hot clay. 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 <laughs> yeah, part of clay, part of iron. Yep. Okay, and those ten horns are those ten toes that are there. Again, we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail on that. But what you've got going on at this point in time is a repeat of what happened back in Genesis chapter 6, verse 24. Go over there with me. Okay. Something else you've all heard me say many, many times. If you want to know what's going to happen in the future, read the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 6, verse 24. That can't be hanging on the wrong... Number two and four, that's why I'm just giving a little comma there. Verse two and verse four. Genesis six, verse two. In fact, we need to read one and two there. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God, okay, sons of were the sons of God again, these are the angels saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Go to verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. That's where you get the stories of Zeus and Hermes and Mercury and Hercules and all the other, you know, those stories, all those, they're all based in this. That's who these mighty men of renown are. You end up with the race of giants. <coughs> in fact, it's like God wipes out the earth with Noah's flood. Uh, you have these damnable race of beings. Uh, that are a mixture of the angels of heaven and human beings. Well, this is going to happen again. There's going to be ten supermen who will be over these ten kingdoms. I mean, why do you think they've been pumping us full of stories of you know, Superman and all the other superheroes and aliens from out? I mean, think of the story. I mean, I mean, for you, this is going way back for you too. Okay, when you go back to I don't know, when was it 1941, 42, somewhere in there, maybe a little before that, when Superman, and okay, fictitious character, comes on, you know, becomes a big hit. I grew up with those comic books and that kind of. Well, you know, you get this 
looks like a human being, alien, comes to Earth. Okay, to save Earth, right? And that's exactly the story that they're going to get. You know, we've been, they've been hunting for aliens out there for decades, you know. And that's going to be the story. Yep, we've come here to save the Earth. There, there's an enemy coming that we need to protect you from. How many, how many Hollywood movies have been about that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, who's that enemy that he's going to come and he's going to take over the earth, he's going to take it by force, and he's going to, yeah, well, guess, guess who that is? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come and take it because it belongs to him. But this is the story that they're going to feed to the Lord. God says that he's going to give them strong delusion that they believe a lie. Sorry, there are no little green men from outer space. They don't exist. And as I've told people many times, you know, even if they do, if there is life on some other planet somewhere out here in God's incredibly huge universe, they don't matter to what's going on here. And no, the the alien sightings, the UFOs, that's all demonic. Plain and simple. Let's look at a few more verses, and we'll wrap it up here for this morning. Uh, back in Deuteronomy, fifth book of the Bible, Deuteronomy 3.11. Deuteronomy 3.11. Deuteronomy, chapter 3, verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Yeah, some of them survived. The, how did they survive the flood? The Bible says clearly only eight souls survived the flood. Right? That's because the DNA was with them on that ark. Okay, one of the wives, whether it was Noah's wife or one of the wives of his three sons, they had that DNA. That's how they, the Bible says clearly, everything with breath that wasn't on that ark died. You know, we've got King Og there. You know, it's interesting, we talk about, you know, it goes on and says, Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Iron. Uh, is it not in Rabath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof. And he was a big fella. <laughs> The four cubits, the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man, cubit of a man, 18 inches. Uh, basically, a basic measurement from elbow to fingertip is how they measure things. First uh, Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. Well known chapter. Verses 3 and 7. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Another really big individual. Okay, span is this distance. I mean, if, if he were standing next to me right now, his shoulders, neck, and head would be above our ceiling. He'd be a big guy. Uh, uh, Daniel, chapter 7. And verse number 7. Daniel, chapter 7, verse number 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth piece. Dreadful and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts, behemoth, that were before it, and it had ten horns. This is the Antichrist, this is the beast here. And you're going to have half human, half devil in these ten kings. Just like Judas Iscariot was. Go to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. 
Judas Iscariot. And I'm not going to go into that at this point in this study, but Judas Iscariot is the Antichrist. We're looking at verses 70 and 71. Lord Jesus Christ speaking, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? But it isn't like a devil. <laughs> is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Judas Iscariot was a devil. He is the son of perdition. Again, for the sake of time, I'm just going to give you the references here. He's the son of perdition. John chapter 17 and verse 12. John 17, 12. Also, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and Revelation 1711. That word perdition means damnation and destruction. When Judas hung himself on a tree and he died, the scripture says he went to his own place. That's in Acts 125. He went to his own place, Acts 125. In Revelation 911, we have the an angel that is sent to open up the pit. All kinds of monsters come out of the pit onto the earth. It says they have a king over him. His name is called Abaddon in the Hebrew and Apollyon in the Greek. Both names mean the destroying angel, the destroyer. Judas Iscariot is going to be the Antichrist. He's going to be re resurrected by Satan into a new human body. Satan himself enters into him at the midpoint of the tribulation, causing him to become the beast, Satan incarnate. And along with the false prophet, they constitute the unholy trinity here upon the earth. All right, so we're going to stop there for this morning. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yes, brother. Having seven heads and ten horns. Yep. Were those ten horns divided up amongst the seven heads? Somehow. Okay. I mean, you know, that's obviously okay. one head's going to have, you know, Medo Persia probably had two, for example, because there's two kingdoms right there. Rome probably had two okay. on it right there. But we don't have any doctrine that it, says exactly what no okay. no i'm just uh extrapolating that uh -huh. from you know i'm just logicking it from what the scripture says but yeah they would have been divided up amongst them any other questions how about kingdom the kingdom there were seven the last one was what the last one okay we'll go back to those number seven okay is the kingdom of the antichrist i'm sorry i didn't say that did i Number seven is the kingdom of the Antichrist, okay, which emerges from the old Roman Empire. And the last, the eighth, is the beast. It comes from the seven. And again, that's back in Revelation 17, where you have that. But yeah, it would be Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. Number seven is the kingdom of the Antichrist, which comes from the old Roman Empire. And the kingdom of the beast is the kingdom of the Antichrist, but he changes. And he, he becomes the beast. Now, during the first three and a half years of the tribulation period, everybody thinks he's Jesus Christ. That's why he's called the Antichrist. He's got all the answers. He's able to help to bring the world back from the devastation of the world war that occurred that starts the Holy Land. That's when he enters into the Holy of Holies and declares himself to be God, that Satan enters into him and he becomes the beast at that point. And from that point on, we have what's called the Great Tribulation, Jacob's Trouble. He begins to persecute Israel 
and he persecutes those who have put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ as well. And that's uh, outside the, uh, the, the scope of this study on that. We're just looking at this specific chapter. Any other questions? Anybody need to repeat any of the verses for you or any of the other information from this morning? I don't know, I threw an awful lot at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll stop there for this morning.